Welcome to Infinity Rewatch. I'm Andrew Fantasia, and I just want to start off by saying, folks, listeners, viewers, all of you fans, I did it. It took some doing, but I finally convinced Ryan to watch Moon Knight. <laughs> he kept blocking my calls. I had texts going unanswered for days. I'm like, dude, we got to do the show. And he's like, man, I'm, I'm not into this. I don't care about Sun Man or whatever his name is. Leave me be. I'm trying to watch Wonder Woman 1984. Stop texting me. I'm turning my phone off. And I finally convinced him. <laughs> I had to pay him a little bit. <laughs> Bribery was a thing. But he watched Moon Knight. And now here we are talking about it. You're welcome. <laughs> I do this for you, fans. Uh, you know, I know, I know everyone wants me to watch Morbius, but uh, that for sure ain't gonna happen because I just love Wonder Woman 1984 so much more than that. <laughs> Imagine loving a movie so much that you won't watch other movies because <laughs> it's like, man, Grumpy oh, Old Men was so good. I am never watching Child's Play three. Like, I, I just can't. <laughs> or Dennis the Menace. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. Well, what's up, everybody? I'm Ryan J. Marvel, and man, oh, I could not be more excited about Moon Knight as per Fantasia's humor. Uh, yes, I, I, might, I may have bugged him quite a, bit, <laughs> quite a bit about the excitement of Moon Knight, and they did not disappoint. They did not disappoint. I am so proud of this, this storytelling. I mean, you know, this is your classic. This is your absolute classic. Classic, classic, classic Marvel storytelling. And I'm talking like when you're like, okay, Ryan, you're like, what do you mean? I'm taking I'm talking about how they took the traditional Marvel formula from back in the old Iron Man days and they reinvented the wheel. They have reinvented it. They found and and I mean that in the best way possible because they found a, a C listing character and they're giving them the Marvel treatment, and it's so good. It is so good. I think it if there's one important thing I want to put up front as my general thoughts, Ryan, and tell me if you agree with me here, is I think the most important thing to like mention about Moon Knight is that they told us off the bat, they told us a couple months ago now, I think, they said, don't expect a whole lot of MCU connections. This is very much a standalone thing. And I like that that has happened and i feel like if they want to make more things that are really standalone all they have to do is say this right all they have to do is say the same thing just have five year whoever or the showrunners just be like hey yeah we're doing you know a show about forge uh but it's not really going to connect with anything it's just a cool show about forge and eventually you know you'll see forge rubbing elbows with i don't know falcon but right now it's just a forge show that is fine with me uh, I find that a trap I fall into, and it's my own fault, I just get too excited, is, you know, we're sitting there and we're watching Shang-Chi and I'm having a great time, but there's a little thing in the back of my mind that keeps poking me and saying, what do you think's going to happen in the post-credits? What do you think we're going to see in the post? Is the Hulk going to show up? Is Spider-Man yeah. going to show up? And, it, you know, we, we fall into this trap because that's that's what we have been conditioned to do. So I love that they took the time beforehand to say, don't worry about that. Just relax and enjoy Moon Knight. And I do feel more relaxed. I don't feel that poking in my head right now. Do you feel the same way about this? Yeah, no, actually, I think you're capturing exactly where, where everyone's head's at. And I think this is perfect. And you know why? And, and, and you know what? The reason why I like what you're, what you're talking about is because the main, the main thing we need to understand is like the Avengers happened, Endgame happened, and it's, it's good to start building on things. It is. And it's good to start kind of laying a new, laying a new house, like start laying in, in those bricks and start building on, you know, building the walls and everything. And I, but I like, that's why I think like when you revisit like black widow or you, you know, and WandaVision, don't get me wrong. I love WandaVision and Falcon and winter soldier, but bringing in a new hero with a fresh perspective that isn't connected to the MCU yet. I think is exactly where we need to be. I think it's hundred yes. percent where we need to be because, because the, we need the dust to settle. We need the dust to settle 
this, the, you know, and that's why you and I have talked about in past uh, podcasts and videos and all the stuff that you're watching on Infinity Rewatch, you know, through the Revelstone Podcast Network, where you can click and subscribe and leave comments, all that wonderful stuff. But I think that I think that you need to start small and start the furthest away from what's been happening because then that's going to create that longing for getting us back to that connection by having characters like black widow falcon and all this stuff like we're we're literally like it it's literally like this major event just happened and we're shoving a camera right up these characters faces and like how do you feel tell us how you feel about it and we don't need that we don't because to be fair like i like i would love to see you know, again, like what what this means for the world of MCU, and 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 you know, now we're getting this character that's completely in left field, and it's interesting because he's a New Yorker, but we're seeing him in England now, which is really yeah, it's perfect. Mm -hmm. I because like because if if Kevin Feige is all about cross pollination, then yeah, start in England and slowly work your way back to connecting characters and doing small things like. Like this, this could be an Iron Man experience, and there's a there's there's a thing I will bring up later on, but this could be that Iron Man experience where it's just like such an isolated story that in the end credits they might do something to say like you know um, you think you're the only superhero, well you just open yourself up to a much larger universe you just don't know it yet, and that's that kind of duality of a statement where it's like stay tuned Marvel fans because you. Th you think this is just the one hero, but guess what? We're going to tap into others, but it's going to take the whole series to establish the character and then throw in like, stay tuned because you know, this character might interact with somebody else. Right. We have the luxury with Moon Knight where we know right from the get go, more or less what this plot is going to be. It's going to be about him piecing together who he is. And I think it's a really cool parallel to Captain Marvel. Uh, because that was a very similar situation. The, the first half of that movie, maybe even more than the first half, is just her being like, who dis? Who am I? Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then like, we spend that whole movie really, besides Nick Fury, not really connecting to any other stuff because it's just her story. And this is another great example of that. Uh, so mm -hmm. I like the healthy mix that they're throwing at us. It just it feels nice. It feels like the box of chocolates. I don't know what I'm going to get with every new show. So Moon Knight, the show is finally out. It is not Mark Spector yet. It's still Stephen, what's his machine? Grant. Grant, thank you, Stephen Grant. Um, working in a museum in England. Uh, have you ever worked in a museum, Ryan? I've always seen people in the movies do it. And I feel like it must be the most relaxing job in the world to be like a night watchman at a museum. Because oh, unless you live in Gotham, I don't think I've ever heard of any museum being robbed you know what i mean you know it's you know it's funny uh i was i realized i should have messaged my brother because my brother works worked at a works at a museum and he used to work in the gift shop oh so <laughs> your brother is stephen grant yeah my brother is stephen grant it's it's perfect it's it's a perfect uh setup there but yeah i it, i i've never worked in a museum myself uh but i know people who have and they they love it i mean it's 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 like I think it's if I were to describe a fictional experience that's close to it, it's like wandering through the Batcave and then you see all like the relics of these different characters and they they just it opens up like these incredible stories like the giant dinosaur or like Two Faces giant penny, you know, all that stuff. Like all that stuff is is like wandering through museum. When you look at one thing, it leads to this whole story. So um yeah, I, I think it's cool. But this is interesting because in this version, so of course they've kind of put the MCU formula in here. We're not getting a direct rip from the comics. They're, they've obviously made changes and they even were quoted, Oscar Isaac was quoted saying that they were trying to find more juicier elements to tell the story. Hmm. So they're not directly ripping frame for frame from the comics, which again, I can, when Kevin Feige and the MCU team does it, I can trust that formula. I can trust that formula wholeheartedly. Because they're going to take what's relevant and and go with this kind of satirical approach and update the character to a modern time. And what I like about this is that Stephen Grant is supposed to be this millionaire, you know, kind of Bruce Wayne type character. And in this one, he's just such a mild-mannered guy. 
And they did this as a creative writing choice. And I think it's a smart writing choice because it it's kind of like, you know, we have these multiple personalities that we put on in real life. Like if we want to be a confident version of ourselves, that's a that's a personality that we're projecting, right? Like we're not, that may not be who we are. And that's where Moonlight's kind of storytelling is beginning is that a cl clearly that, and I love it too, because we kind of get that story, uh, that first part of the story where he's, you know, uh, he's going on this anonymous date that he clearly didn't set up. He clearly mm -hmm. didn't. And here, but here he is like, okay, yeah, I'm going to say yes to this. I'm going to find someone to be with. And it's, it's a really good start. And I think it's, Again, that MCU formula, I think, is working thus far. I think it was a smart choice to make Stephen Grant this kind of this. I think he's he is our avatar for like the narrative of the story because we're constantly asking the same questions he is. So I think through him, it was smart to kind of let us follow him at that point. And that date thing, that was one of my favorite aspects of this episode because them putting that in there like it just got my my cylinders firing and I'm like, oh, there's so many fun things they could do with the fact that Steven doesn't know what Mark is up to and vice versa. Uh, it, it reminded me of, there's this great movie from the 90s, this little comedy movie called Blank Slate. Have you ever seen it? I, I remember hearing about it, but I don't think I've ever seen it. I think it's David Spade who plays the main guy and James Earl Jones is in it too. And he's a, a private detective but he has this condition where every time he goes to sleep, he loses his memory. So he's trying to solve a case, but like he's got to like leave notes for himself, including a note that says, this is your name. This is what you do for a living. Every time you go to sleep, you lose your memory. So there's that. You know this girl that you like, and this is what you and like. It's this whole thing that he keeps like piling on more information for himself. And this date thing reminded me of that. And I'm really, really stoked to see how far they take that. Because that is one of the things I love about this character who I really didn't know much about for the past several years, up really up until like Marvel. Until Thunder I Wires. made that video about it. And until you made that sexy video about it, which you can watch on the channel as well. Just click for, I think we called it Moon Knight, uh, everything you need to know or watch this before you watch Moon Knight or something like that. Some YouTube title, but you'll find it here. Um, so here's this character that I didn't know much about. And now that I've learned about him, he is one of the more unique superheroes out there. Uh, in fact, I would put him on a level with Spider-Man in terms of just how unique his powers and just sort of basic overall gist of him ends up being. So they damn well better play with the uniqueness and play with what makes him different and shove that in our face because of how different it is. And so far, they're doing a great job of that. Yeah, this is, I, you know, when they first announced that they were doing Moon Knight, I was really excited because this is a very mentally tormented character, like because of his, his uh, uh, multiple identity disorder uh, aspect of this character. So I'm very, very excited. And and again, this is and what I love about it is they're taking characters that have a lot of cult success, but in terms of overall popularity, like this is a very C-listing character, but to give it the Marvel MCU treatment and like making this character new and fresh and and just and and seeing something that normally people would overlook. I think this is gonna be really exciting. And and I have seen a lot of multiple personality disorder kind of movies now i mean i think one of my favorites uh and still to this day kind of almost surpasses moon knight right now but moon knight's still very fresh is when will willem dafoe did green goblin and he did the mirror thing mm -hmm. i thought that was really clever um and then in glass uh james mcavoy does a really good job and and oscar is doing a great job i honestly i again i want i want to see more and I love the voices in his head. I think that is a really good, fun play on, on how it plays out in the comics with Khonshu, like trolling him essentially. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, but yeah, I think the the multiple personality thing is going to be a lot of fun. I love the intro when he had the the a thing tied to his foot, and he had the sand around his yes. bed. The doors were taped. I, I think that was really cool. And it's funny too, because when Isabella watched it with me, um, when she watched it with me, she's like, she's like, why does he do this? And I'm like, and and she doesn't know the character. She actually, she didn't even, she didn't, she didn't watch, watch the, your video. She didn't watch the video. Well, she did, 
but she she did but she didn't quite still doesn't quite grasp exactly what the character is all about yet and she's like so so yeah she's like why does he do this and i'm like because he he thinks he has some violent sleepwalking tendencies and then once she realized later on that it's the multiple personality disorder that she thought that was really clever so yeah i mean again i love the intro i love when they i love the use of like classic popular music that like we we would hear it's a good tone setter um and yeah and it was it was really fun and yeah the date thing was a really kind of nice story but it, i think what i like about the dating trope that we see with this kind of mild-mannered character what i personally like about it is it just shows the humanity of the character and i think that's really smart in turn because the thing with these superhero stories is the they actually kind of they kind of forget the humanity sometimes and they get more involved in the supernatural elements of the character. Uh, but that's why I think Captain America shines so well is there's this, the humanity of the character. And like, I like talking about how he, he just wants to be able to dance, interact, like have a normal interaction with people. Like that's, I think like that's such a beautiful humane story. And, and that's why I like Steve Grant's thing. And I, I love that he's like falling asleep and like you'll scream in the middle of public because he's just like <laughs> constantly trying to stay awake. Uh, but I love that. I absolutely loved it. That needle drop, man. I I think I've said on this show before how when I was watching Spider-Man Far From Home with my friend who is also an Italian gentleman like myself, when they played the song Stella Stai by Umberto Tazzi. We looked at each other after and we said, we just saw a Spider-Man movie where they played Umberto Tozzi. And now I had the same reaction where I'm like, I just saw a, a Marvel show where they played Engelbert Humperdinck, Lonely is the Man Without Love. And I was just, I, I could not have been happier. I hope that's the goddamn theme song for this whole show. When they do it the should be. credits. It should be. It's, it yeah, is, oh, it should be. Oh my God, what a perfect little needle drop. Uh, and I love when you hear a song that you used to hear all the time, but you haven't heard in years. That's like the best feeling of that. that That's, just... It's hard to pull off, but when it's done right, it feels so good. Uh, um, yeah. yeah, so it's it's really good, strong narrative at the beginning. And it, I mean, I love, the, I love that it starts with the villain. It starts with the villain yeah. putting the glass in his shoes. That, that was, was really smart. Ooh, that, that was a good way, too, of like telling us what we're in for. Because that was mm -hmm. some heavy stuff. Yeah, I mean, putting glass in your shoes and then walking in broken glass all day, whoo, that is some mental training right there, let me tell you. Oh, my God. I oh. remember. Yeah. Now, here's, here's a question about Stephen Grant. Yeah. Because I'm assuming the real guy, like, on his birth certificate, he, he is Mark Spector, right? That's his real actual name. And then Stephen yeah. Grant is a persona and Mr. Knight is also whatever. So my question for you is, who do, who do you think, how do I grammarly phrase this properly? I, <laughs> my grammar is not good. I'm so sorry. It's so bad today. I don't know what happened to me. Just I let swear. it go, bro. I swear I'm Just a let it go. Who does he think he's, the person he's calling who he thinks is his mom, who actually is that? Because Stephen Grant does not have a mother. Ah, no, that's interesting now, isn't it? Uh, mm. To be honest, I don't know who he thinks he's calling. Or sorry, I know who he thinks he's calling, yeah. but I don't know who he's really calling. If I had to guess, I think it could be, a, uh, like his mother could be dead a long time and just he has an answering machine that he constantly puts message in. It could be a setup for Mark Specker to make Stephen Grant feel like he's a person. Ah, uh, right? wow. Right? Because he used to be a CIA operative. So fake identities for him is like, he can just make them on the fly. So, you know, that means he could be setting up like a fake answering machine for him to like, you know, leave a message for his mom. We'll see. Wow. And that's like a, that's a lot of commitment. I didn't realize it was that level where he's like, he's not only the main guy in the Moon Knight costume, but he is the caretaker of his other personalities. Like mm. that's something really... Oh, I can't wait to see that take shape. Uh, it could be. I mean, I could be wrong, and it could be just as simple as, like, in this world, he just created this identity, and no one identifies him as Mark Spector. So so he could just go in and get a new birth certificate. Who knows? Like, who knows? He could very well believe. But, I, okay, let me, let me actually say what I'm going to say, which is he very well believes he is Stephen Grant, 
right? Like right. Mark Spector, Mark Spector is the only one of the, all the identities that I know is that he's having these issues. But the, as far as the other personalities are concerned, he is 100% those people. Okay, yeah. So that makes it a, oh, that, that just, again, I hope they play with that because that is so unique. That is so niche to Moon Knight. So keep mm-hmm. playing with that. In the meantime, this poor guy has a date that he did not make. Um, maybe Mark. Well, made let's it. get to why we should get to why he didn't make it, and mm-hmm. I and I love that first scene. Oh my god, the first blackout scene when he wakes up in the middle of nowhere. What did you think of the location? Um, are we talking when he wakes up in the the small town in the mountains? So when he woke up there, uh, I don't know if that's like a specific pinpoint on the Marvel map or anything, but. When he woke up there and I got a look at the town, um, I was like, it immediately threw me off. And I was like, okay, something is definitely wrong here uh, because this was clearly a town like somewhere in the Swiss Alps, Bavaria, whatever, but it was daylight and he went to sleep in England at nighttime. So I'm like, a lot of time has passed here. And it really, you know, it told me right away, this is not the same night. So even before the show kind of caught up to that concept, I was like, oh, no, like how long, where is, you know, it it just, it created this whole question in my mind of how far does this guy travel? And, and, you know, like what lengths does he go? How long is Steven under, you know, pushed underneath? How how much, like, because it's clearly not just a nocturnal thing now. He could be gone for weeks and have Mark take the reins. So just the sight of that town got me excited for just more possibilities. For sure. And speaking of possibilities, it took me my second run through to realize that could be Latveria. He just, he could have escaped Doom's castle. That, oh, crazy. I, I'm feeling about that territory. <laughs> too exciting. <laughs> that is too exciting. <laughs> Right? Like, I, I it's funny because my stream for a second there froze with you having this shock face. Mine did yeah. too. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I it took me my second watch through, but I was like, huh, that's weird. He's in he's escaping a castle in a small town. <laughs> I'm, and I, I'm like, I'm pretty sure that is Latveria. He's just running out of. Um, but yeah, it's a lot of a lot of fellow conspirators are feeling the exact same way that he escaped uh, Doomstat Latveria. Doomstat, what a great name! So, yeah. if this is Latveria, let me let me pose the question now. Tell me about this man. Tell me about Ethan Hawke's character and mm-hmm. why if at all, he'd be, you know, ringing Doom's doorbell. What's his deal? Good question. Um, so this character, to me, right now, it, it seems like kind of like an Iron Mongol or better better descriptor. A better descriptor would probably be um, more like a... Uh, give me a second. I'll get there. Uh, the the second Iron Man villain, uh, the kind of the Whiplash or uh, Anton Anton Vanko. That's okay. the one, Anton Vanko. Uh, so Vanko, it could be a Vanko character because I he's play his the name of his character is based off of a villain that was on one issue of Moon Knight. One issue, that's it. And he was kind of just like a mad scientist. He didn't really have any powers. Like he was just a genius. And he was doing weird experiments on people. Like he specializes in pain and just manipulating with pain. And I think that's where the glass kind of plays a factor in the whole thing. Mm -hmm. But this whole Egyptian God thing is kind of a unique angle. Now there is another Mm -hmm. character in Moon Knight that's based off of the sun God. And he used kind of, he kind of did the crocodile thing a little bit, but he, he was based on Ra essentially, which is the bird, the bird Egyptian element there. But, um, but yeah, so I think this could be one of those amalgamation characters where it's not exactly one specific character. It's kind of amalgamation of two characters, but in this particular case, they're kind of making up the second half, uh, sort of, and, and using just a comic book reference character. So Arthur Harrow is a mad scientist 
highly intelligent and focuses on pain. And then Amit, I believe, is the, the Egyptian character's name. Um, she is a character in the Marvel comics as well, but obviously played by a lady. And but she does enlist avatars. But in the comics, she'd never listed a male avatar to mm. to, to do her bidding. So it's that's why I'm saying it's kind of an amalgamation of two different characters, just molded into one. Um, but I mean, it's interesting nonetheless. I think that the that the the premise is really cool that he's kind of like the thinks he's the scales of justice and kind of inflicts punisher like tendencies uh where you know just uh you know you may be good but you could be doing bad later so i'm just gonna wake you out that kind of thing it's funny you say punisher because his power when he touched that old lady and he's like nah my scales are turning red and then he basically mummifies her on the spot that reminded me that felt very ghost rider I had some serious Spirit of Vengeance vibes going on there. I I I feel your Spirit of Vengeance, but when he the reason why I bring up Punisher is when he describes what Amit's all about is like she looks at your past, present, and future, and you maybe do some evil in the future. So that's mm -hmm. that's where I kind of get it from. But I agree with you. I'm definitely getting what what I like is I definitely like to see more supernatural in the MCU. I mean, Doctor Strange really opened some doors, but I don't think. I think that what Moon Knight and Ghost Rider and Blade could really bring is a more edgier side of the supernatural. For for Doctor Strange, it's more like kind of an Alice in Wonderland, Alice in Wonderland wonder to the whole experience. Whereas Ghost Rider, Moon Knight, it's like edgy and dark and like, Ugh, you know, that kind mm -hmm. of thing. So, but yeah, I mean, so when he lands in uh, the field, we get to see Khonshu there, which was pretty cool. I, I um, it was so fun and uh isabella didn't like the voice i wanted to point point that out she didn't like his voice she didn't like the voice and and if i were if i were like a hardcore moon knight like comic book purist you know i could see where fans may not like the voice because it's a bit campy trolly you know what i mean like it's a bit kind of fun whereas like Conchu is pretty dark force of nature in like the comics and in when you read it you kind of get like a lot of uh think of like think of like hulk in the avenger in the first avengers where all his all his lines are very kind of dark and tony like dark and um depressing mm -hmm. that kind of thing um and in this one he's kind of just like a fun angry guy like he's like he's like what are you doing peasant like he's just like talking like that he's like get out of here parasite like that kind of thing but i i like it i think it's a fun i think I think it adds to the humor of the show where they're because like I think the show could be pretty like mind bending and twisted. But I think because they, they need the humor to kind of keep the pacing fun. I, I kind of like his voice. He's like, oh, the idiot's back. Like that kind of thing. I think it's fun. I like it. Yeah, I like it too. Do you recognize mm. the man behind the voice? Uh, I know that he worked with Oscar Isaac on a film about music uh, and yeah they worked on a movie together before and they were at ends in that movie as these two characters they did not agree and it seems like in this one they're not they're not on the same page here so i think that's pretty funny then he's been double typecast because he's also known for another movie about music that you and i both had to watch in college he's the main character from amadeus <gasps> oh my god he is he plays antonio oh, salieri the man who hated mozart so much he basically went crazy hating him that's two classic actors from our school and that have made it into marvel movies and <laughs> call neil call neil call neil yeah where's neil get him on get him on this stream let's talk to him <laughs> Oh, oh man, that's funny. One day I'll have oh, yeah. him on the show. I like I like that they brought Conchu in pretty early. I I love his stature. Like he is direct rip from the comics. Like that's how exactly how he looks. Mm -hmm. Uh and it's so oh, it's so cool. Uh and I love the whole action sequence. It's it's a fun action sequence. And the other thing is I love that we haven't seen we don't see him switching personalities and seeing the action play out. I like that he blacks out. It comes back in and all the action's done. I, I, I think yes. that's fun. I, 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 as, as time progresses, I would love to see the switch and like see the action sequences, but I love that we didn't see it right away. Well, it's just so jarring and scary and great, right? Like the, the guy in the cupcake truck, 
where it's like after a second you look back and he is a corpse. Like he's he's not even like falling over. Like he is a corpse who has just been sitting there. It was that was a great little reveal. Mm-hmm. It was a fantastic reveal, and again, I like the the little subtleties. Like you see the the change coming on, and and then blacks out, and then fade to black, and then boom, he's just driving backwards, and it's all fun. <laughs> um so yeah so there's a couple of interesting things i do want to point out first of all uh now that we've talked about where we're at in terms of the story thus far uh the scarab uh the scarab is actually a comic book reference to one of moon knight's tools he has like these like moon ranks where they're they're like crescent moons that he throws but he also used to have scarabs that retained a similar shape it had like the little scarab thing in the middle and the wings would pop out and he would throw that um so that was kind of a nice little nod there couldn't help but notice when he was reading books trying to keep himself awake that there's a giant book on greek mythology and it's pretty visible so that was a nice little nod there uh with marvel being like (laughs) um and of course uh that the potential reveal of latveria i have a feeling that something could something interesting could be uh could be playing out here and this is a reach. This is a Feige radar. Like, this is my brain being trained to think a certain way. Think about it. We could... Could get a Doom reveal. It's very possible. And the reason why I say this is because Doom is notorious for grabbing artifacts and studying them. And that seems to be a certain angle of where we're going with the supernatural side of characters with not only Doctor Strange, but Shang chi and Wong studying these artifacts. So we could get a nod to Doom here. And and they don't need to cast him. They don't need to cast him. They could literally just show him doing a shoulder turn. You know, this uh, Arthur Harrow uh, could be like, hey, I couldn't get the scarab back. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. And then Doom turns around angry and just grasps his hands and we could have a Doom moment and it's all wonderful. Or he could just be sitting in the chair with the shadow just over him. You see like the green cloak and like maybe the metal face and what, but not the eyes, like that kind of thing. Like, I, I don't know. This is one of those baits. This is one of those things where they're just throwing it out there much like the shuttle in WandaVision. Like they could just let you know that, hey, this is happening. Just just throwing it out there, but don't worry about anything else other than it's happening. I think it's possible. It is a very sneaky funky radar thing. Um, maybe it's reaching. It's it reaching, reaching a little bit. I, I would say I think if I had to put money on it, I would say maybe we don't see him physically, but maybe we see like a castle with green banners and Harrow walks into that castle to do some business and that's like our post credit scene or something um yeah i feel like we won't see him just because this this just feels like a very removed kind of thing i don't know maybe i'm wrong but yeah i have a, i just have a feeling we're not seeing him yet it's still early it's still early but but there's no mistaking that he was at a castle mm-hmm. in a small town in the mountains and that's exactly where latveria is so it's kind of too coincidental um now moving forward to the museum scene uh i love arthur harrow's confusion with moon knight uh and stephen grant i thought that was really fun um and i you know one of the other things i like thus far is we didn't get really we didn't get moon knight like we really didn't get him to like the last 30 seconds and i'm okay with that yeah he's the reveal yeah, he, he, well, he, again, there's going to be many reveals of <laughs> Moon Knight in this one, all personalities in there. In there, But uh, yeah, I mean, I, again, I hope they continue to push this. I, and I agree with you here. I hope they continue to push the multiple identity disorder thing and like gaps in the story because it kind of creates this fun mystery narrative. Yes, it, it, it's fun for us to piece together. It's fun to watch Arthur piece it together. I hope they have moments where we know the story and we watch Arthur figure it out. And I hope they have moments where we don't and we have to figure it out. I want them to just utilize him, 
stretch that beautiful caramel center that is Moon Knight's uniqueness to its limit without breaking the strand and having two separate pieces of caramel bar. What? I'm hungry now. <laughs> well, here's the okay. So here's the other thing. So now that we're seeing Moon Knight, and now we're that we're talking about Moon Knight, the interesting thing that they changed to make the character more relevant to today is in the comics, he was just a, he because of his Stephen Grant persona, he was a rich guy, and he would create the Moon Knight. He had or sorry, he was given the Moon Knight costume, and he in in other words, in other comics, he actually made the costume. <laughs> Excuse me. But, you. Thank you. Um, but in this time around, he summons the suit, which I mm -hmm. think is interesting because it's almost, I think it was an interesting choice because it's almost as if Khonshu gave him the suit, which I'm, yeah. which I'm all for. Well, this suit in this show, it looks more like a mummy wrap than it has in the times I've seen him before. Before, it just looks like basically what Daredevil wears, but white and then with a cloak. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. But this has a very definitive, like, there's wraps, there's bandages. So, yeah, it does feel more mythical. It does feel like Conchu is just kind of like, here you go, buddy. That's my F. Murray Abraham for you, kids. <laughs> Enjoy. <laughs> Call me. Yeah. I'll, I'll make your voicemail for you. <laughs> yeah, no, it's. I, but I think it's a smart move. Like, I like the transition uh, from 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 him going from mild manner to Moon Knight because you see the walls turn into like Egyptian glyphs and mm -hmm. then like he he kind of summons it which is again which is a really cool way to do it um uh, again I'm getting more and more excited to see him in action uh and we still have a lot of his kind of personalities to sort out what I kind of hope that happens though and one thing I'm kind of I wouldn't say worried about because like at this point I'm really happy with the show. Like it, it would take a lot. It would take a lot for it to fall face first at this point. Like it would take a lot. But what I'm hoping is that uh, the multiple personality this sort of thing is like kind of getting solved a little quickly. Like he kind of tells Steve Grant like, hey, it's fine. Let me take over. I'll do it. And, and then I've noticed in the trailers, he's like, do you really want to know what's going on here? And what I'm hoping that Marvel does, and they didn't do this as much with Floor as I wish they did, was like you. They, I want them to make sure they make the audience feel that this is this character thinks he might be Moon Knight, but he may not be, and he's just having these episodes, and he could just be this one. He could just be Mark Spector, a well-trained fighter who could do all these things, right? Like in the comic, they did a really clever thing where they made him feel like he was Moon Knight. For like the entire comic and he's like this this you know the spirit gave the uh, sorry this ancient god gave him this ability to become moon knight and he puts on this outfit and he goes out and hashes out crime and then at one point he wakes up in a mental institution and they make you question everything wow yeah. i'm hoping they go that route I'm, I'm actually really hoping that episode two begins with him waking up in bed again yeah uh, just like the first one and going to the museum and seeing everything kind of, uh, you know, the aftermath of this fight has happened. So maybe there's like police tape, but otherwise everything's running kind of back to normal. And he's like, how long have I been asleep? And he, he talks to Donna. I think that was her name, the lady who's meeting him. He's like, Donna, what happened? They, there was the bloke with, with the attack dogs. What happened? And, and like, she's like, what are you talking about, mate? Uh, and they get into an argument and he's just more confused. I feel like that's a great way to keep us guessing and keep mm -hmm. him guessing because i want to see that i, I want to see him kind of struggle yeah. with this like i know a lot of people and, and I, I know i know all you listeners and watchers out there i'm gonna say it but hear me out but in iron fist the show that what the start of it was pretty freaking cool in the mm -hmm. idea that like he's this lost kid that survived you know this plane crash in the himalayas essentially and he comes back and he knows all this kung fu and stuff and everyone's like no you're just you're just crazy like you just like and he's like no i'm the iron fist i need to do this and like they treated him as if he was nuts and they ended up committing him in the first part of the series i thought that was so brilliant i'm like yeah. you should push that as far as it can go and they didn't they, they only did it for like two episodes and then they and they're like, oh, by the way, because he knows this game that him and his friend played since they were kids with Skittles or M&Ms or whatever, 
then you know he actually is Danny Rand, and you know, bada bing, bada boom. And they did the same with Thor. Thor, they put him in the hospital, and they're like, uh, his name is Thor, and he like, they're like, he thinks he's the god. And then all of a sudden, they turn the narrative around so fast. Oh yeah, no, maybe he is from Asgard and stuff. And it could be a time thing, like, hey, we only have so much time with these characters, so we kind of need to jump the story a little bit. But I think there's more clever ways to do it. Like in the comic books for Thor, if you read the Ultimate series, they question if he's Thor like the whole time. They they think he's a guy with powers, but whether mm -hmm. or not he's the actual Norse god Thor, they question all the time. All the time. They're like, You're you're just a weird guy. And right. I, I hope with Moon Knight, I hope with Moon Knight they they push this. They push this this identity, this sort of thing as far as it can go. Yeah, and th there's this whole Mr. Knight thing too, which I don't know much about, but damn, that costume is so cool too. Uh, and I don't know if Mr. Knight and Moon Knight are aware of one another. I don't know if Steven is aware of this. Like, I'm just, I'm so curious to see what they do with it. This is going to be a lot mm -hmm. of fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. And I, and again, this is a really unique character. Uh, I'm really happy with where Marvel's at right now. Because, I mean, if you think about it, like we have Moon Knight right now, which I can just marinate with for, you know, however long this, sh well, the show is only six episodes. So for the next five weeks, I'm, I'm a happy camper. Like this is going to be great. And then, you know, wait a month and boom, we're in Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. And it's perfect. By the time this ends, I think we might have some overlap again. Uh, if this is six episodes, then we will have overlap. That's right. No, yes, because yeah. it will be. Yeah, because I think it will be the the last episode or the second last will be when uh, Doctor Strange comes out, isn't when it? When it drops, it is going to be April in a few hours, and mm -hmm. then uh, May fifth, I think, is Doctor Strange yeah. Day. So I think so. That gives us April's a shorter month, so that gives us about three and a half weeks. I, I would say Moon Knight uh, might, yeah, might be on its season finale by the time Doctor Strange comes out. So then we get Doctor Strange, and then we get a month break. And you know what? The last trailer of Miss Marvel really excited me. I'm really excited for the show. It looks like we may get the Wrecking Crew, which I'm pretty also pretty excited. For. Oh my God! Yes. <laughs> yeah. um, and well, I'm only basing it on one shot with four characters in smoke, which I can only imagine is the Wrecking Crew. I don't know. Either that or the Ghostbusters. Either way, I'm happy. <laughs> Let's play yeah. Never Tell Me the Odds because right. this, this crossover has me thinking now. What are the odds, Ryan, that the one big MCU crossover character that we get in Moon Knight to help set her up is America Chavez? I don't I think the odds are pretty slim. And, wow. and the only reason, the only reason I say that. It's because you hate Moon Knight and you refuse to watch the rest of the episodes? <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> uh, no I, I honestly think that we're probably going to run into someone like Blade. Ooh. Okay. I don't, because America Chavez, she's having a big screen debut. So I don't think they're going to put her in the show first. It's, it's one of those things where she will likely show up in a show after, but I don't think it would be before. It's it's too, I don't know. And and the other thing is is like why to what end to what end would that like what would that prove? You know what I mean? Like the only reason I I pulled her name is because um, I a she's with the supernatural side of things, so it, it kind of fits to put her with Moon Knight. But this movie feels so overstuffed that I think introducing a new character before the movie and giving us time to get to know her a little bit just saves them some time. I, again, I see what you're doing. I see what you're doing, but I don't believe it. I don't, I just don't see it. And, and again, I would say what's more likely, and I said this in the Moon Knight video, is I see him running into Black Knight. I see him running into Blade. And the interesting thing is, is that in the Eternals, Black Knight was in England. Yeah, Black so, Knight definitely tracks. And he hangs out near museums. So it's almost... And, and, and I feel like with Marvel right now, they're only putting characters together if there's a reason for them to be together. 
And with America Chavez, like I, I can see, I, I can see how, but I don't see why. I mean, because right. because of America Chavez's ability, it really opens her up to just come in at any point. But with someone like Black Knight or Blade, both of them were found in England, and and Black Knight has spent a lot of time around museums. So the fact of them running closer together makes sense to me. And and Blade seems to be on the hunt for certain people, uh, bloodthirsty people, I guess. So, you know, uh, because, um, you know, Black Knight picked up the Ebony Blade, which craves blood. It, 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 it craves for killing people. And so it would make sense for me for those characters to kind of come together and be like, Blade, maybe, maybe Blade is like looking for like the Queen of All Vampires and then, you know, sees Moon Knight just wrecking, you know, wrecking peeps and being like, yo, you're cool. Why don't you hang out with us, Night Stalkers, eh? Eh? You know, like something like that. Like I, would I hope see that. I hope it's written exactly like that. The credits end. We see Moon Knight walking around, and he's like, "Oh, I think mm. I saved everyone." And then Blade comes out. And he's like, "You're pretty cool. Come join our Midnight Suns." And that's it. And it ends. Yeah, so like, oh man, I you know, but like what? Uh, what I'm hoping for is like I want like a mid cameo that's like Blade. Like I would love like episode three blade to come in and to, like do something cool, have a scene together where they fight, fight something together. And then blade just gives them the nod, the superhero nod, and then walks out. You know, you know, like when two motorcyclists, when they're driving by on the road, they give each other like a cool signal wave. Yeah. They're both motorcyclists. Like that's what I want with blade and moon Knight. Just like that little moment. Like, Hey, we're both superheroes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Blade's but, like, yeah. I gotta go deal with this Morbius guy? Mm-hmm. Question mark. I don't know. I don't even know if I know who he is. Bye. <laughs> but I. But yeah. I mean, the possibilities are endless here. I'm really, I'm really hoping for. I will even take, even if Blade doesn't show up, I would gladly take Black Knight and Cersei. Easily, Ooh, those two. Yeah. And the reason why is because they're Avengers. And Moon Knight is, has been an Avenger. So that's three Avengers right there. Cersei, though, she's gone, right? Arashem has her. Oh, that's right. Yeah, technically. Uh, I do want to see her again. And I know you want to see Gemma Chan again. Um, but yeah, I think Black Knight really fits like a glove in here. I think you're right on the money. He's just, it, it all, he would just visit the museum and be like, this is a nice place. I want to be a ranger. And then you know, like, can I help you? I'm trying to do some stuff. So yeah. am I, right? Like there, there's uh, there's perfect crossover material. You wouldn't even have to try mm-hmm. to get them to meet. Like so, so the interesting thing about this this show is they say it's supposed to be a combination of Fight Club meets Indiana Jones. Mm-hmm. And what begs the question is, why did they say Fight Club? Because Indiana Jones has got enough action for, to stand alone on itself, and it makes sense. Makes sense, and I and I don't know. Maybe the Fight Club element is the the guys, uh, the that character's kind of uh, mental dis- disability. Um, I think that's exactly and, what it is. He's just two different put, people. Yeah, so maybe that's it, uh, which is cool by me. But the other thing is, is that you know maybe maybe there maybe this force. Uh, could get Moon Knight to to ally up pretty quickly with other characters, you know. Uh, maybe there's an evil supernatural force admitting from Europe, you know, because that's where vampires come from and uh, mm-hmm. all sorts of other supernatural things. So, and I mean, yeah. the existence of Khonshu begs the question: like, how many other folks are out there similar to Khonshu, right? Like, what is does he Mephisto. exist in the vacuum? Confirmed. You heard it here first. <laughs> and when we meet him, he'll be visiting Christine Everhart's house. <laughs> where she'll be like, I can't wait to annihilate things with you, Mephisto. And he'll wink at her, and then she'll turn and wink at us. Boom, cut to credits. Yeah, no. I, but I agree with you. Like, why not Why not Mephisto, right? Like, why not? Why aren't we... Like, if they can introduce us to someone like Khonshu, then this... Op- like... I, this is one of those things where I think Marvel's trying to get the audience used to a certain level of storytelling now. Like, because yeah. now we've done, you know, Loki kind of introduces us to a whole new level of time travel. 
and how multiverse works. And then now we're like going into the deep end with like, what if, and then like, you know, Dr. Strange and multiverse of madness. So with these gods, you know, we, like we've already gotten Thor kind of opening the idea of Asgard, but they tried to explain that like, oh, by the way, like Thor is actually like, they're not gods. They're just like beings from, an, you know, another world. But this one, they're actually admitting like these are Egyptian gods. Like yeah. these, we have Amit and we have Khonshu. And so, yeah, I mean, who's to say now Mephisto isn't going to, you know, send his his rider out you know like who knows but you're but one thing we have to remember which brings us full circle to this whole this whole episode one review or rather full crescent oh 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 mm. you're welcome yeah well to wax this moon let's just uh let's just say that uh <laughs> Uh, let's just say that uh, this remember this is an isolated MCU story. So I don't I think that we're gonna get our traditional potential end credit cameo experience at the end. We're not gonna see it any midway through. But key things to keep in mind is he's in England, so he's on he's in the Europe area. Uh, and the only other characters we know that have been in that have been identified in the area is the Eternals, Black Knight, and Blade. So right with all that's going on. Um, and this also I read today takes place after the events of Hawkeye. Okay. So it's pretty much, you know, where it falls. It's not yeah. anywhere before or after. Good. It's current. It's current MCU post infinity war. Yes. Po post end game post. Uh, five oh, year, sorry. Yeah. Post. Five year yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's perfect. That is perfect for me. Um, mm. And I think there needs to be more superhero shows and movies where the hero throws cupcakes at a man's face to get him to back off. Yeah. That is watching Steven try to fight his way out of a situation. I was like, I would be entertained with a show of just this. If Moon Knight never shows up, I'm still gonna have a good time with this dude. <laughs> um, speaking of speaking of Moon Knight not showing up. Um, there was another comic book reference that I actually mentioned in our Everything You Need to Know About Moon Knight video. Uh, when he looks at his phone and he's going through the list of names, you see Layla, 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 Layla. Got me on my knees. And one name comes up and it says Deschamp. And that actually is a comic book reference to his best friend throughout his mercenary days. So we may see him down the road, uh, Frenchie Duchamp. Um, but uh, but again, it was just a nice little comic book nod. He's kind of like uh, he's kind of like an Indiana Jones uh, Jacques, the, the pilot that flies him out <laughs> of the, the Raiders. So that kind of thing. So anyway, I thought that was a nice little nod there. Um, I think I think in this one though, I don't think we're gonna see too many other comic book nods. Layla is also an interesting character. I noticed in the end credit sequence, I do want to point out that there's a photo of Layla with an older man, which makes me assume that she is kind of a hybrid love interest character, uh, where she is the daughter of a famous archaeologist. And um and so she's a lot like are... uh you know, she's like uh, Marion Ravenwood. Exactly. It, uh, exactly. That's what I was thinking as well. Um, so they kind of they kind of changed her up a bit in the comics. She's a blonde, and her name's like like um, it was like something like Mar Maria or something like that. But anyway, um, but yeah, so they kind of changed her up a little bit as well to kind of make her character a little more interesting, aside from being just a love interest. So. We'll see. We'll see what what's going to happen with this and how this plays out. So I am very. But again, just to kind of wrap things up here, Moon Knight couldn't be happier. I'm really glad they're picking a really C listing character, much like Song Chi, and and giving a real good spotlight on this character, and giving him the MCU treatment. Fun fact also is this writer was the writer for the Fantastic Four 2015 movie. Really? Mm. Wow. When asked about when asked about his his experience on the Fantastic Four movie, he said, and I quote, that uh, he wanted to write the Fantastic Four movie at the time like an MCU film, and then at the time the director said no. 
So this the director is... said no. Josh Trank is the one calling those shots. Really? Well, now we know what kind of person we're dealing with here, Joshua. Nah. If that is your real name. Uh, but good yeah. for this writer. Good for this writer yeah. to get like to finally, you know, put out something that it seems like he wanted to put out in the way he wanted to do it. Absolutely. Very excited though. This is this is gonna be fun, guys. This is and listeners, this is going to be a fun ride. This is going to be a fun moon night of a good time. All right. Let's wrap up with this, Ryan. You have a wish list of three things that you want to see slash happen in the show. What's on your wish list? Oh, I like this. Uh, mm-hmm. This is new. Um, I want to see some more badass moon night fight scenes just using all his weapons. I think that would be really cool. Uh Hmm. <laughs> I would like. Okay, actually, you know what? I would like to see his brother be introduced. His brother ends up becoming the the, uh, the dark version of him, right? The dark yeah, knight. Yeah, the dark the, the dark moon knight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Shadow knight. Shadow, Shadow knight. knight. Shadow knight. Yeah. I would like to see his brother come into play because I think him and his brother have a really good story arc that that. That involves the Avengers and involves all sorts of cool things. So it involves him being framed. And I think if we get his brother, then the cool part is about it is that um, it also would play up to his a bit of his more multiple personality sort of thing because Shadow Knight ends up framing Moon Knight a lot. Mm -hmm. So it kind of leaves him to kind of question his personalities a bit more, which is really fun. So I would like to see his brother introduced. I doubt we're gonna get it though. I don't know. I'm I'm hoping the best here. Uh, definitely. So more moon, for moon night fight scenes. Uh, more um, or sorry, uh, the introduction of his brother because I would love to see that. Uh, and finally, uh, I would love to see a Blade visual cameo at the end. I want Blade. Black Knight's cool. I'll be happy if Black Knight comes in and like they're like he's like all like oh you need to join the Avengers or whatever. That would be cool. But I want Blade. I want to see what Blade's gonna look like. That's what I want. I want to see him in his regalia and everything. So that's what I want. Now, also one more thing I want to keep in mind for both you and and listeners and and watchers of the Infinity Rewatch. Um, I will say this. Um. This mini series is the six episodes. That's it. They they have no plans for a second season. Do do they want to see Moon Knight play with others? Yes, but not as a Moon Knight story. As Moon Knight being a part of another story. This is a very much we're going to tell this full story of Moon Knight in six episodes, and that's why also these six episodes are an hour long. So think of it as like a six hour long movie. Uh. Well, I've what I've liked about the Marvel shows is I have gone into each of them with that mindset that this is okay. just a one-time thing, um, and it was this kind of cool little surprise when Loki ended the way it did and said like, "Oh, cliffhanger! We've got more to come." Um, but I hope the majority of these shows are just mini series because uh, that just makes them feel more special. I think uh, it makes them feel less like you know like a Netflix show where it's just like, "Stay tuned in a year, you'll have the next chapter." Like. If you give me a mini series, I'll feel like you're telling me all the important stuff up front. Uh, okay, what do I want to see? What's my checklist? I, I'm also going to go with Shadow Knight because I just want to see those two together on screen. That sounds like a blast. I want to see him use his staff because staffs are cool. You're talking to a guy who likes Donatello. Staffs are cool. And the third thing that I would put on my checklist is I want a scene that's like something straight out of a late 90s Eddie Murphy movie where I want Mark and Steven and Mr. Knight sitting around a table arguing with each other and maybe have Khonshu come in there too and just have some kind of back and forth where I don't know, they're in a room with mirrors so they can do this and it works. I just want to really, like that whole scene from Infinity War of just like, why is Gamora? Who are you? Who am I? Is Footloose still the greatest movie ever made? A scene like that, but it's just Oscar Isaacs <laughs> around the table. I, I think they could have a lot of fun with that. That would be a hard scene to shoot, but it would be a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Oscar Isaac, man, I mean, he proved right here. He, he's carrying this whole show. He's in every scene. 
uh, aside from the very beginning where you see Ethan Hawke doing nasty things to his body, you're always following Oscar. So he can carry it. He's fantabulous. He's 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 gonna he's gonna be big kid. You're gonna be in motion pictures. He's already in motion pictures. I'm too late to the game with that impression. All right. Any final things to say, Ryan, about uh, Moon Knight? And uh, if not, tell us where to find you. Uh, no other things to say other than like, let's go, let's go, people. This is a this is a great series. We're in we're in some real interesting content for Marvel from here on in. I mean, think about it. We have Moon Knight. Then we have multi, uh, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. Then we get Miss Marvel. Then we get Thor: Love and Thunder. We're in for a ride. We are in for a ride, and it's gonna be good. I'm so excited. <laughs> um, and I mean, hopefully, we'll see more on She-Hulk. Although I've heard I've heard some sketchy things going on about She-Hulk in terms of a lot of questions whether or not they know what they're really doing with the story so oh. um yeah it's 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 kind of nerve-wracking but uh but yeah i'm very excited for the show uh we're seeing more we're seeing some dark corners of marvel and i think it's going to be a lot of fun so i'm very excited for that and you can find me on twitch.tv forward slash xbox canada uh and um showing off the latest and greatest things with xbox and uh, you can find me right here with the Rebel Scum podcast team, uh, just hanging out on the Marvel side of life. And I'm sure you guys are excited with your first two episodes of Obi-Wan Kenobi being pushed back two days, but getting two episodes right out of the gate. Yeah, you don't want to compete with Miss Marvel. You just let them each have their space. <laughs> uh, you can find me in the actual dark corners of Marvel, just squatting in a corner talking about Christine Everhart to whoever will pass by and listening to me. Uh, other than that, you can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Andrew Fantasia or at Andrew underscore Fantasia. Just start typing my name and eventually you'll find me. I'm not hard to find. Uh, and then you can find me here on Rebel Scum Podcast Network, also on Digital Charcuterie, talking with James almost every week now about <laughs> we've been talking about Morbius a bunch. And boy, do I have things to say. Uh, it's a crazy movie. That This movie is something that is like, I'm going to be talking about it for years uh, in the same way we're talking about Batman and Robin for years, I think. <laughs> uh, maybe you can find me on my channel, the Andrew Fantasia YouTube channel. And hey, if you want to buy my book, Side Scroller, you can buy it on Amazon right now. There's a paperback and there's an ebook uh, because some people like reading ebooks. I don't understand those people. I'm a little bit frightened of them. I cross the street when I see them coming my way, but hey, to each their own. Uh, all right, Ryan. So I'm, I'm sorry I forced you to watch Moon Knight, uh, but thank you so much for doing it. Until next time, I hope you, sir, and I hope everybody listening has a marvelous day. <laughs>